Welcome to the Old Brother Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Smith. Alongside me, as always, my brother from the same mother, Mike Smith. I don't well, think, I, I think we're just going to have to pre record that now. I don't think I, I think can get so. through I, it anymore. I can't. I don't even see the funny. It, and I and I work so hard not to even look at you. And I just, but I'm, what am I doing? It's like I'm War just, of the Roses. Some days I can't even look at you. I just want to smack your here. face. I'm yeah, but you're, here. there's this whole avoidance thing that, that takes place. So well, welcome to your brother around. podcast. I'm trying not to look at you. Uh, yeah, I wish you would. So try harder. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. So November 19th, when you get this episode and we're taking a little bit of a left turn here with this uh, movie review today, we're doing uh, an Apple TV original. Well, technically not an original. They purchased it from Universal Pictures, but Tom Hanks film called Finch. Yeah. Which was, I guess, originally, Thank God originally titled Bios. Was it? Was the original title. Yeah. When Universal Pictures had it. Did this you goes, say, this you goes didn't say Finch, did you? Finch. I watched Snitch. You know, oh. The caper where the guy tells on the other guy. Oh, man. Are you talking about Snatch? Guy Ritchie? No, Snitch. Snitch. It's the new, it's on uh, Amazon Z. Oh. Giving, uh, giving Emily some work to do <laughs> right at the top. I think it's on Tubi. Snip, snip, snip. All right, so listen, uh, for those of you that are not currently following us, make sure that you do. And the easiest way to find all things O Brother is to go out to our official website, which is OHB as in brother podcast.com. That's OHBpodcast.com. And you can find uh, all things O Brother out there. You get access to all our social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos out there, check out the O Brother shop, uh, Wait, blog. Uh, uh, we got a problem. The old brother shop again. Big problem. Big problem. Emily, stand by. <laughs> big, big, big problem. You said I'm this before ready. with your credit card, something or other. I got hired to do a puppet show, an old brother puppet show. Okay. Oh, look at this! So look at this, folks. Now, how I, how appropriate? We're, uh, but we're doing a review about a movie with a guy that builds a robot. Right. Mike's creating his own puppet. His own. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan Smith. How about you, you can't put podcast. it on the other way? Well, that's because. Folks, uh, for those listening and not watching, Mike is. Uh, he's doing his best uh, lamb chop impression. So here's, you know. Where's I said where's they the were thick? They're not real thick. They look kind of thick. But where's uh, where's the mic sock? Okay, watch this now. Ready on the back. What? That's not me. That's them. What happened? My face is totally blocked out <laughs> with like a patch. <laughs> Ah. It's got like a patch on both of them. <laughs> it's, the, it's the heel. This is perfect. Mike is a heel. How a perfect. Be- You're on the heel. That is hilarious. I mean, is that what that is? It's the heel. Yes. Because wow. I get out to do the it puppet show and I had to use my own face. It couldn't be in a better location. I love that. that. I, so I wrote them like yeah, drop an hour those, long. Drop those in the mail to me. Those, I'm going to be uh, sporting those around town. Wow. I was so furious. Well, get yours now, folks. The uh, <laughs> Dan Smith socks out at the Yo Brother shop. Oh, my the God. That is hilarious. Part, the best part. Yeah, your head. It, it almost looks like Clockwork Orange. It's like like they purposely like you're wearing a derby or a hat or something. It's like somebody looked at me and said, cover that shit up. Look, look, it isn't that what you that's the shirt you've got on the clockwork. And it's sort of, yeah, that's very weird. Clockwork orange. That's so strange. I'm furious. All right. Well, I did. I wrote I wrote down this. No refunds at the Yo Brother shop. (laughs) So (laughs) we'll see. So this uh, this film uh, Finch with Tom Hanks. Now, we talked about. You know, we've we've mentioned Hanks here and there on the on the show, and I, and I it made me think back to, I don't know what we were talking about, but I made a comment about Hanks that, you know, I worry about again oversaturation. We've talked about this on the show recently, and he's so recognizable, right? Mm-hmm. It, it came up when we were talking about um, 
a beautiful day in the neighborhood when he did the Mr. Rogers movie. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, really sort of believing in him as that character. I'm like, yeah, it's just Hank's doing this or Hank's doing that or Hank's with a top hat or whatever. Uh, And I, you know, so I was worried about that with this because I didn't even know about this movie. It kind of came out of nowhere to me. Had you heard about it? No. Well, I shouldn't say that. I did hear about it a ways back. Because it's been delayed like but, so many yeah, films. For... That's I, I heard about it and then I just kind of forgot about it. Yeah. So it was originally Universal Pictures and then uh, Apple Apple Plus or Apple TV Plus or whatever Apple, purchased yeah. it. And, and they that, did. Isn't they it renamed funny it that, Finch? Isn't it funny that Universal did Disney a huge favor because Eternal struggled so bad in the box office? throw this in there and i think some people are going to see tom hanks yeah yeah i don't know well give us the uh give us the the summary of the film and then we can just comment on it tom hanks character is finch is it uh winnegard weinberg weinberg is it one so i wasn't sure if finch was his first or his last name i didn't really yeah finch weinberg Okay, so Finch Weinberg is played mm-hmm. by Tom Hanks. Right. And we instantly are thrown into this situation where it's kind of a post apocalyptic world. Right. And Hanks or, or Finch is scouring a store, or he's actually outside. Scavenging. Yeah, he's outside and he goes into a store as he's scavenging, looking for. You know, like the jackpot was dog food when he found dog food, which I thought was for him. Right. And uh, so he's in this store and he comes out and you see the backdrop. We can tell something something isn't right. He pulls out a map and marks off the location he was just in. And you can see his big map of basically the whole state. Yeah, and it says cleared all the areas that yeah. have been cleared. Yeah. So um, he kind of, is, you know, he he goes back to his, I don't know what you would call it, his home base. Yeah. And he's he's got a dog, and and that's why getting the dog food was the jackpot. And he's also got this little robot that he's made that's yeah. scavenging with him and can pick things it looks up like wally i kind of looks like wally yeah. yeah 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 so he's kind of talking you know to the dog and wally too because who else is he going to talk to it kind of reminded me of castaway which is over here mm-hmm. talking to the ball you know to keep his Wilson. sanity yeah so he basically says you know it's time we got to move on with you know, and and then he kind of charts a course to find supplies. And that's the that's the premise, basically, post-apocalyptic world. Uh, we don't see any other human. We don't know. We we don't know yet at the beginning what has happened. Right. What caused this. And then talk but about it, talk about his, much modern day. His creation. His his co-star. Okay, so in the course of right at the beginning of the movie, he's working on another, I don't know what you call, I guess, a robotic. He's some kind of genius, you know, like engineering kind of type. And he's feeding these books and it looks like he's just destroying them. I thought he was making paper towels or toilet paper or something. (laughs) But he's actually feeding the books into a computer, hence feeding it into the brain of this robotic right. um, sidekick Robot. that he built. Yeah. yeah. So, and sure enough, he starts, you know, can you understand me? Do you hear me? And there's a funny exchange, you know, not if you can understand me in the, the thing keeps nodding. Mm-hmm. He goes, and he's like, well, do you understand me? And it's just nodding. And he doesn't know if he under stop. If you understand me, well, you said to, so he, he makes himself a buddy. Yeah. Well, and what you find out is because you do, you do 
come to discover through the exposition that there was a solar flare that destroyed the ozone layer basically is what happened. And so he's now been exposed to this radiation over whatever period of time it's been. Well, there's, there's constant exposure right now because if he goes out during the day, I mean, the ozone layer has gone. Right. He sticks his hand out. It just fries it like an egg. Right. But you, you realize through the, the course of the film, he's suffering the effects of this exposure oh, yeah. over he's, time. He's, yes. And so he knows that shortening his, his lifespan, ultimately sick, you, yeah. you discover. And so this robot... Uh, that goes by the name Jeff, and we can talk about that a little bit. He he basically constructs him to ultimately take care of his dog. Yeah, ultimately, and yeah. Um, because it, in the very beginning, when he's building him, he he once he comes online, he goes through what his prime directives are, and that's like his number one directive. Right, is to watch after the well, dog. First, it sounds something like I robot. Yeah. I got that. Yeah. Right. Yes. Will Smith. Yeah. And you know, what is it? uh, I forget the guy's name that made the three rules of robotics. You know, there's a real guy that, you know, number one, don't hurt man. Right. Don't aid in the assistance. Yes. And that was very, it was very similar. Right. Very similar to those, except he adds this directive about, Caring care. for the dog being the number one priority. Right. And the dog's name is Goodyear. And you discover why later in the film, you mm-hmm. know, we don't have to get into that backstory. But um, so I, I had no expectations about the film. You sort of made the suggestion and it was on Apple TV. So it was an easy watch. Yeah. And I think it's only about a 90 minute film, right? It's it's not. Actually, not, it's closer to two hours. Oh, is it close to two hours? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It um, goes by, it's, uh, you know, uh, I've heard some people call it boring and, and it drags, but I didn't find that myself. Yeah, this is, uh, and I meant to say at the top, it's directed by uh, Miguel Sapoch- Sapochnik is what we're saying. Hopefully we get that right. Uh, well, it, it, no, I think it's, I think that's, I don't think there's any need for a counter, Emily. The producer's but- Robert Zemeckis. Yeah, my uh, going through his uh, warm up before the show with Zemeckis. Yeah, well, Rotten Tomatoes has it seventy three percent rating from the critics and sixty eight percent from the audience, which is you know about right. And you know some of the some of the uh, criticism was really lack of originality in this post apocalyptic story. You know, like we've kind of seen this before, even with like you mentioned Wall E. I mean, there's a lot of similarities and. Mm-hmm. In, in, in that mm-hmm. film as to what's going on. Um, and of the course there's an I underlying, mentioned. and there's an underlying message as well about the environment right. and right. right. So right. Th- those are very similar. And that was a little bit of my feeling after watching it, but I enjoyed the film. I thought it was a nice heartfelt film. It had some humor in it. Uh, I thought, you know, when you think about the cast, it's Hank's acting opposite of a robot. Yeah. And nothing more, you know, than that than than his dog. So and, the cast what is was, um, the 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 kid's name. I shouldn't call him a kid. He's he's probably twenty or so now. Caleb is that his name? Caleb Landry Jones. Caleb. Um, yeah. He does a a really good job, I thought, as the robot, giving the robot a kind of personality that we could stay with and believe yeah it's funny because he he early on he wants to have a name and yeah. there's there is a funny sequence at the beginning uh, where he uh, i think hanks suggests or finch suggests the name jack and right. he says no jack is a tool's name <laughs> and, it, and it sounded like you know it was a, it was a play on words like like i'm not a tool you know, right. And, and, and we, of course, he gets that because they had a, a blowout. Right. The shredded drive. tire on, on this motor home that they're driving. And Jeff around acted and... like a jack. He held up the yeah. RV. Right. So right. It was, you know, I thought for a family film, this was a good movie. Mm-hmm. And it's really a tearjerker. 
in some spots. Yeah, there's I mean, definitely some emotional beats throughout yeah. the film for sure. I just I thought I thought they humanized Jeff a little too much and maybe too soon even. I, I know they had to kind of get on with it, you know, to be yeah. able to, you know, but it just seemed like that all happened so quickly. Yeah. Like as soon as he fed the stuff and, and we find right. out that a storm's coming and he only fed him 70% of the information mm -hmm. that he was going to feed him. And uh, so this Jeff, this robot is very smart. In fact, he makes references to Einstein and, didn't he say something about maybe naming himself Einstein? Or... I think so. Yeah. Yes, and he then did. Finch says, now there's already an Einstein. You can't be right. You know, Einstein. So, um, but Seamus was great as the dog. Yes. You know, we see the, and I want, you know, you always wonder when they use a pet, it's always difficult. You know, the, the famous saying by WC fields don't work with kids or our pets. It's because they're unpredictable. Well, Hanks has done it numerous times. Yeah. And Turner and Hooch. I, like, I think if this was in the theater, given, you know, the way Eternals worked out last week or two weeks ago, not so good. You know, it's probably going to be the lowest, um, the lowest earning MCU film to date. Mm -hmm. below the hulk which is currently the lowest and the hulk did 140 million so um what is what if, finch have you seen any you know numbers on that even if i saw numbers i wouldn't really trust them yeah because you know it's, it's apple what do they what do they use as a determinant yeah. of the money you know how many subscriptions I don't think I would have, I wouldn't have subscribed to Apple TV for this. We no. just happen to have it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I liked the movie and I thought it was a good movie for Hanks. Now he's got something else coming up. Um, I know what it is. It's a Disney movie, which is Pinocchio. Oh, okay. The real life Pinocchio story. Is he Geppetto? He's Geppetto. Oh, I didn't even know that. So, so this is a live action your... Pinocchio. Yeah. Huh? So that could run into your issue a little time bit. To, time to dust off the, uh, what you call it? The uh, Mulan YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> it's over 6,000 views now on YouTube, folks. Is it over 6,000? It's over 6,000, yeah. Yeah, yeah this was uh, really nice. It, like you said, it, it was emotional. Um you know, at times and, uh, it was well-directed, you know, it's, 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 it's a nice film visually, um, yeah. you know, just a few minor story, uh, issues that I have with it. Like I said, I just thought they were a little quick with the exposition of Jeff and he just seemed a little too humanized for me. Yeah. You know, there, there's a couple of continuity issues that I have that I don't want to get into because i don't want to spoil some it's things. even got some suspense too like it's suspenseful at times you know yeah. um like you yeah. mentioned not really knowing are there other humans uh, around if so where right. are they you know that that's a whole sort of subplot that's going on too and like you said earlier we do get a backstory yeah. to the dog we get a backstory um of how he got it and why it's so important to him or uh, you know, I mean, imagine if that's your only companion, right? For who knows? Oh. And he does make reference to people, but in a very negative way. People are bad. And you can't trust them. You right? know, that's what he treats, uh, teaches the robot. Yeah. You know, people no good when he's trying to map a course. We so tells me there's other people still around somewhere. Yeah. Because he's trying to stay on course away from people. I guess there was a there was a lot more to this film that got left on the cutting room floor. There was a whole other chunk that never made it. It it was I, it sounds like it made the film a lot darker. Hmm. Uh, and so they actually decided to to cut it out after you know watching the edit 
or in mm. the editing room uh, and to try to make it a little bit more upbeat, which I think that's what you end up with ultimately. It's, yeah, it's, ho- ultimately. it's a hopeful, it's a hopeful film in the end. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. And I think um, as, as you mentioned, like the people who reviewed it online you know, talked about it dragging, talked about it being, you know, some people called it boring. I, I do really didn't find that at all. No, I didn't find it boring. I was, I, I was with the story from the beginning. And yeah. I thought the pacing I I was, was it. good. Yeah. Um, you know, there's, but, but if they had added a chunk, I think that would have been problematic. Like if there was another 20 minutes to, half I agree. Hour, I agree. I think it, it would have been problematic. Yeah. It, it seemed uh, satisfying. And um, there's some really good scenes in it by Hanks acting yeah. opposite the robot. I mean, it, it, it was like really emotional and intense and it, they get Let into this, he like yells at him at one point, you know, yeah. because he's, he's kind of screwing around and he's not really right. And he tells him to grow up at one point. That was like really right. intense. And then, you know, as he calms down, he apologizes and it's very sincere, comes yeah, out very sincere. Is. Now, there was a scene at the really early on when they came back from that first scavenging where Hanks is, is basically nude throwing up. Right. And I bring this up because I don't know if they used a body double because I don't think he was that thin in the movie. No, I I had the same reaction to that Did you? A, okay yeah and, and they were clearly showing it to show how emaciated he was correct which you would expect but it didn't seem like he was that way they tried to like he was wearing you know big t-shirts and correct things and shorts so they were trying but i yeah i don't know if it was a body double or cgi or it's or it's not like um castaway where right. they shut down production for a couple of months while he got ridiculously yes. skinny Right, right. Yeah, I thought the same thing about that. Um, were there any other notes about the film that, like, did you read any of the anything about the production or? Um, I didn't. It was what in New Mexico? I think they filmed. I the think that's where a majority from the watching the credits. Yeah, um, a majority. And this guy's directed. I don't know. He he had some affiliation with uh, Game of Thrones. Maybe some episodes right. of Game of Thrones. I, I know I read that, but. I think it's a good little movie. And I, I think this would have caused Disney problems. I think this would have ate into Eternals from the bad word of mouth. And people might have said, hey, why don't we go see the Tom Hanks movie instead? And, you know, kids probably would have would have said, no, we're going to the Marvels. And we haven't seen Eternals yet, so we have no. Yeah, not as of this way of knowing. Yeah. I've heard, right. I've heard glowing things, and I've heard, you know, I, yeah. I know problems that it has already, but I've heard uh, whether or not mixed. we'll even review it, I don't know if we'll be able to fit it in. Well, it's on the slate, so you know we'll yeah. see. But yeah, we've got um, we've got a, a an interview highlight reel that's going to come out uh, over the Thanksgiving break, which would be appropriate you know it's kind of a, a we thought it'd be a fun collection of all the interviews we've done and sort of a way to say thanks to all those that have been on the show and and we've had the good fortune to uh to chat with uh so looking, looking forward, forward to, to that look forward to seeing Re- that yeah and you know yesterday was disney plus day i don't know if you watched any of the stuff on there yeah the uh ob1 thing's gonna be great i think it looks good the kenobi series yeah um but one of the things I'm really one of the next movies we were going to do is Encanto, which was supposed right. to be a free Disney Plus movie premiering on Disney Plus. And he's he's getting up on the it. soapbox here, folks. Hold yeah, on. Yeah. Well, you know, there it goes. They, they saw how they made a little few dollars with uh, what was it? Um, I don't know. Eternals should make them do an about face, but they won't. You know, I mean, Eternal still made $70 million for, I don't know what the budget was. I'm assuming with a cast that size, the budget must be 250 yeah, something a few hundred like mil that. At least, yeah. Um, so, but, you know, 
hopefully we'll get a chance to see Encanto because that hopefully will be Disney getting back to Disney. And we'll see. I'm really haven't liked their late, you know, their animated stuff lately. Yeah. It's not thrilled me. Well, what is your uh, what is your pick this week? Well, you know, I went uh, back to a couple of classics. Billy Wilder, one of my favorites. That'll you got tune any guesses. That'll tune right into the demo. Yeah, I know. Well, I figure they'll strike we, a chord we with go the demo. With something new. Yeah, but but if you don't know Billy Wilder, he's just you know I'm a big film Warnock guy, and he's All right, get best. to the pick. Okay, I have two. All right, so you can you can either get take, to it. Some like it hot, yeah. Some okay. like it hot with yeah. uh, Jack Lemon and um, Marilyn Monroe, Tony Curtis, Tony Curtis as well, Jamie and Lee Curtis another Jack well. Lemon. Oh, The Apartments, great! This film. is a great, great movie. That's a great Both movie. Billy Wilder classes. Did you think I was going to pull up Double Indemnity? No, no, no. It um, seems a little bit too obvious. The Apartments, the other, great. Jack Lemon is just God. He was so good. And do you remember who his boss is in it? The apartment, no, I Fred don't. McMurray. Oh, right, Fred McMurray. Yeah. So see, speaking of Disney, with Billy Wilder. Yeah. Well, that's know, good. And, and double indemnity. Together. I like you're doing this this double shot now because you know that I'm 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 coming with nothing. You got nothing. I, I'm unprepared. Huh? I have to say, yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, but this one was good. Like I said, this was a Finch was a departure. It wasn't you know uh, planned on the on the slate of things yeah, to do. Yeah, we weren't going to do this, and I do enjoyed it. Favor. I would recommend it. Yeah, I, go again, to YouTube, would, right? To see the, uh, you know, to see the picture. That Andy oh put yes, together. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> the really thumbnail for the episode is quite uh, humiliating to me. And what you might want to avoid. Speaking of humiliating, is the old the, brother, uh, old brother socks. socks? Hey, it's the old. Wow, brother that brother. is well. They got it right. I, I, I gotta say, they had a 50-50 um, shot, I'm and they got it right. And that's Mike, yeah. and he's a jerk, and I know everything. That's pretty bad. Uh, wow. I think, uh, my opinion, this movie is this. Eh, shut yeah. Up. Put a sock in it. But, but it's time to put a sock in it there. Yeah, give him a thing. Sherry Lewis. <laughs> wow, that's bad. That's she can put terrible. a little thing in the Muppets up here or something. Anything else about Finch here? I mean, I wouldn't say as you did. I say, I you know, not to, if you don't have Apple TV, I'm not saying run out and subscribe yeah, to I, it for this. I, but I, yeah, don't if go, you can get your hands on seeing this film, yeah. it was nice. I enjoyed Wait, it. Is it going to have any kind of a release? I Probably not. Not that I've read. Because yeah, some movies... They're actually going to get a release after their streaming life. So, yeah, this one I wouldn't. These. I wouldn't think so with, with yeah, this probably one. not. It didn't seem like it would have quite that. Whole IMDb power, but... had it at a 7.0, which is okay. very similar to what. Yeah. The tomato people had it. <laughs> the tomato people. It's a nice take. So um, there's your review of Finch. Um, and again, for those of you that aren't currently following us, make sure that you do. And the easiest way to find all things O Brother is you got to go out to our official website, which is OHB as in brother podcast.com, OHBpodcast.com. And uh, we'll be coming at you again with, uh, I don't know, maybe Eternals, uh, maybe not, you know. Ghostbusters is coming up. We got Ghostbusters. We got that Wes Anderson French dispatch that we haven't even yeah clean yet so so the next it's kind of like a surprise week for us <laughs> there's a lot in the queue yeah 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 we have no idea what's coming up but well this is going to do it for another episode of the old brother podcast i've been your host dan smith alongside me as always my brother from the same mother mike smith and we will see you next time and i would give a snitch thumbs up for sure <laughs> Bye, everyone. with tom yanks <laughs> <laughs>